Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Cisco Chat Live. I'm Amy Blanchard, and I'm the American Small Business Marketing Lead at Cisco, and I'm this week's guest moderator for our topic, which is Resilient Retail, the Technology Behind Small Business Saturday. So before we kind of dig into that topic, and before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping reminders that we will be taking your questions live at the end. So if you're on Cisco.com or Facebook or LinkedIn or YouTube, put your questions right in the chat. And then if you're on Twitter, use the Cisco chat hashtag. Okay, so just to dig in a little bit today's topic, I know wherever you are, you guys watching, you all have your favorite local retail business, right? Something that is part of the heart and soul of the community you're in. So I'm in Chapel Hill in North Carolina, and I've got Brandwine's Bagels, and I've got Gray Squirrel Coffee, and this and that. It's a little gift shop that I love, and you know, these small businesses, these small retailers really are incredibly important to the fabric of what brings us all together in this community. And we recognize the passion and the work that it takes to get a small business retail like that off the ground but we're also really aware of the impact that the COVID pandemic has had on all of them. So what can we do to help? Like how can we help these small business retail organizations that we love so much? Well, we have something called Small Business Saturday coming up and let's all participate in Small Business Saturday this year. So what it is, if you don't know, 10 years ago, American Express created Small Business Saturday and it's kind of like um, Cyber Monday or Black Friday, but the focus is for you to go to your local retail shops and um, shop from them during the busy holiday season that's coming up. But this year, we have got a little bit of a spanner in the works, right? Like with a lot of our favorite retailers having to close down or adapt their business models, how do we support them this year? Well, the answer is exactly what we're going to talk about today. It's the technology behind Small Business Saturday that's going to help these small business retailers that we love be kind of more resilient over this busy holiday shopping season. So with that, the exciting part of our conversation is about to get started, and I'm going to introduce you to our esteemed panel. So my first guest we've got today is Brian Campbell. And uh, Brian, he does intertech, or integrated technology solutions for small business at CDW. So Brian, thank you so much for participating today. Could you uh, say hello and tell us just a little bit about yourself? Sure, Amy, thank you very much for having and uh, thank you to all the folks out there uh, participating in today's uh, chat. Uh, as Amy mentioned, I lead our integrated technology solutions practice for the small business organization inside of CDW. Uh, and have had uh, varying leadership roles within our small business organization for about the last 12 years. Uh, we help customers make the most out of technology and use it to improve their business. Yeah, so thank you, Brian. And you are a subject matter expert um, that we really need on the conversation today. So thank you so much for joining us and really looking forward to having the conversation with you. And our next panelist, we have got Bill Farnsworth with us today, guys, and he is a global retail business development manager here at Cisco. So Bill, welcome to the Cisco chat today. Could you say hello to our audience and tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi there, thanks for having me, Amy. I'm uh, Bill Farnsworth, I'm the global business development manager for retail, and that means that I, I drive our business strategy for retail. Um, I brought that from uh, growing up and, and working at, at McDonald's and Subway and Panera like everyone did when they were teenagers and managed to make that into a career in technology. So I'm really excited to be here and uh, looking forward to the conversation. Great. Thank you, Bill. We have to uh, swap McDonald's stories later after the chat. I bet we could probably uh, have some pretty funny stories to tell each other. Okay, so we've got our last panelist with us today. We've got Mark Scanlon here, and he is our global small business architect and cybersecurity strategist for retail at Cisco. 
So hello, Mark. Thanks for joining. Hey, Amy. Thanks for uh, asking me to participate. It's, it's kind of a, a, a fancy sounding title, but uh, <laughs> what it really means is uh, my focus is on how we can address business problems and opportunities with technology. So it, it's a business-led approach rather than a technology-led approach. Um, now, I, I live in the middle of nowhere in, uh, in New Hampshire, so uh, our nearest brand name stores are about a 20-minute drive away. So uh, small businesses are really uh, at the cornerstone not only of our retail experiences but of our community so i'm uh, i'm really excited to be here to help uh, support uh, small retailers great thank you mark thank you guys all for joining us today and i could not agree with you mark more that small businesses are the heart and soul of our communities and i'm so excited that we've got the three of you to talk about how we might be able to help them um, with technology today I'm going to throw you guys a softball to get started. Um, when I was kind of introducing our topic today, I mentioned a couple of my favorite local small business uh, retailers that I love that are part of my community. So I'm going to ask each of you to share with me um, what is one of your local retail establishments and uh, why are they one of your favorites? And have you still been able to shop with them since COVID has hit? So I'm going to actually, Brian, I'm going to ask you to start off with that question. Sure. Thanks, Amy. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll start with uh, craft beer and craft coffee. Uh, I think that those are my two bookends for the day. And uh, I, I love starting my day. Uh, I live in, in Chandler, Arizona, and I start my day at, uh, at a company called Peixoto Coffee. And I have been able to participate and continue to support that business. Uh, they've done some nice things to create a good mobile pickup experience that makes it super easy for me to get my coffee. I don't get to sit on their comfy couches and enjoy a croissant, but uh, it still works out well. Uh, and then uh, locally, we've got a great craft brewery scene out here in the greater Phoenix area. Uh, and I'll go visit the Divided Vine or Arizona Wilderness to pick up uh, to, to goes of, of their newest and latest brews. Uh, Brian, I, I really appreciate the your bookends there. I'm a fan of both of those things as well. So that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Okay, so hey, Bill, how about you? What's your favorite retailers? And have you been able to shop with them since COVID's hit? Uh, yeah, so it's been a mixed bag here. I'm in Charlotte. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, interestingly, um, one opened up during the pandemic. And, and I mentioned some of the, the companies I've worked for. Um, before I got into technology and, and Chick-fil-A, even though it's a big company, uh, the, the person who owns the local uh, store only has two. So it is a small business, but they've done a fantastic job of launching during the pandemic and making sure that people can get their breakfast on the way to work or, or grab lunch in the middle of the day. They've just done a great job. Uh, my wife was actually impacted. She worked at a small business, uh, um, a consignment store locally, and they had to shut down for a couple of months but they kept their online going. Um, mm -hmm. And so while I couldn't shop there because everything they put online was the women's clothes, um, they did do a good job of staying engaged with their customers and keeping that community, um, both bringing in clothes and selling clothes. So they've done a good job um, overall. And we've seen some clothes, but but a lot have managed to, to push their way through the pandemic here. Yeah, great, Bill, thank you. And uh, can I just say waffle fries from Chick-fil-A is probably <laughs> maybe 30% of my uh, daily intake. So, um, and it's really interesting to think about, you know, Chick-fil-A being a national brand, but they're owned by individuals locally, right? So they right. really are a small business retail. So that's really yep. interesting to think about that. Okay, Mark, we've had some great retail establishments that are favorites of uh, Bill and Brian. So can you share yours with us? Sure. So, as I said, everything's small nearby uh, where we are, um, and there's a there's a small strip mall, uh, which is the, the the closest stores to to where we live, uh, and uh, they've actually done really well. Um, uh, probably J and B Butchers is is my favorite there. They do all sorts of uh, marinated meats and and things like that. Where wine and beer in there as well, uh, and they were very quick in their response, both uh, in terms of physical. Uh, protection for their customers and staff, uh, but also their digital response. Uh, they put, started doing a lot online.
online, uh, text-based promotions uh, to get people to come in. They very quickly set up a curbside, somewhat improvised, uh, but it, it, it worked for them. And, and you can you know make it work in a small business environment compared to you know larger stores which need more organization. So uh, you've got a degree of agility there that maybe you don't have elsewhere. Yeah. Wow, it sounds like they did a lot of things right to kind of adapt to everything that happened with COVID. So, okay, guys, well, thank you so much for sharing your retail establishment. So I'm going to dig into a little bit more of some of the technical questions. And this is where you guys are the experts. And I'm really hoping you can share some insights with our audience on some of these topics that I think could be really useful. So the first one, Brian, I think I'm going to throw this first question to you. What Digital technology solutions, have you kind of seen emerge this year? And then also, what do you think is temporary for retail, but what do you think we're going to see for the long term? What do you think is here to stay from a, a technology perspective? Yeah, well, I think I'm probably the guy that that bet big on BlackBerry being here forever. So I, I was I'm struggling to come up with the with the passing fads of of what's going on right now. But uh, but certainly it's been a a wild year of of, of innovation, and, and maybe not just this year, but uh, it may be more of a wild year of adoption of previously innovative technologies. Any of the things that we're uh, that we're seeing today that that uh, retailers and small businesses are consuming have been there for a while, but they're really just starting to gain adoption with this this giant compelling event that we felt all over the world. Uh, a, a couple of things come to mind uh, on the front. Uh, number one, there has been a, a big uh, uh, explosion of, of like physical safety technology related solutions. Think occupancy tracing, uh, thermal scanning, things along those lines that make sure that when you enter a retail establishment uh, that, that you're safe and that and that you, you have a, a good secure shopping experience. I think that's uh, that's likely here to stay, but it's also likely to evolve as, as we go. Uh, the other the other safety solutions I think are probably less physical and more data, which is certainly Mark's expertise in uh, in data security, both uh, secure transactions within a retail establishment, but also for any employees that might be uh, working remote or outside of an office, uh, looking at single sign on solutions, uh, uh, connection and firewall, uh, any type of, of of remote access solutions that ensure that that people who need the data and and are allowed to get it can get it, and the folks that that don't need to get it and shouldn't have access to it don't. Uh, the other things that that pop into my mind are all of the 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 video experiences like we're like we're using today. Uh, not only uh, video for meetings and, and, and phone calls, which uh, I know we've all gotten a chance to see all of our coworkers' dogs uh, over the last <laughs> handful of months, uh, dogs and kids, but uh, but also the the evolution in, in just video surveillance and video surveillance as a service. So uh, access cameras and uh, data associated with with habits of, of, of getting a chance to see a, a physical environment if you're not actually there. Uh, the, the last bucket I'd, I'd suggest, Amy, is, is really around uh, around data uh, and, and how it's utilized. So think about uh, CRM platforms and making sure that that we know what what customers are engaging with us and, and how they like to engage with us. Uh, think about uh, e email content marketing or ways to reach customers and prospects has become so much more important to drive traffic back into our stores. Uh, and then any advancement that's being made in like e-commerce and, and mobile solutions, as I mentioned, my, my coffee shop has made the mobile experience fantastic. And I certainly miss going there, but I, I, I have continued to invest my dollars there because they've made it easy. They've made that experience very, very pleasant for me as a technology uh, consumer. And everyone on the call uh, uh, associated with owning a small business and, and in the entrepreneur landscape knows that, that you got to figure out a way to spend as much of your, uh, of your dollars on product and go to market uh, as you possibly can. So being able to look at, at small business focused solutions that are both easy to implement uh, with the right feature set at the right price are super critical for uh, the survival first and the success then uh, of our small businesses today. Yeah, and you know, Brian, listening to you talk, you bring up some really good points about how COVID has kind of forced convenience for some of the consumers, right? All of the things that they've done to allow us to frequent their stores has actually made it more convenient for some of us to access you know, information or their products. So I definitely think we'll be seeing a lot of that kind of technology stick around even when um, you know, the vaccine's out and COVID's over, I think we'll see a lot of that sticking around. 
Yeah, Amy, convenience is certainly not a passing fad. And I think technology really enables convenience to uh, to be delivered to a broader audience and a broader customer base for all of our small business owners. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great, great. So, so talking about convenience, um, I know that I do a lot of online shopping. And I got to admit, I go to Amazon a lot because it's easy and I know how to get there, but we have seen so small, so many small business retailers that, you know, they had to shut their brick and mortar operation and they had to get everything up into a digital platform, an e-commerce platform. So, so Bill, I'm actually going to uh, ask you, can you share some of the challenges um, and considerations that small business retailers should be thinking about if they're shifting from brick and mortar into a more digital retail space? Absolutely. So, I mean, anytime I talk to anyone, big or small, the, the biggest challenge with online and offline or online and brick and mortar is, is how do you rationalize those two, right? A lot of times it comes up in inventory. So I mentioned that my wife worked for a consignment store called Flare Trade here in Cornelius, and they don't have that problem, right? Because they they bring in a you know a piece of clothing or some shoes and they and they put it online. But when you're talking about someone out, I'll, 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 as an example, Bakery Twenty Eight here is a, a fresh bakery and they they make phenomenal food. Um, but if they send something out that says, "Hey, come on in for our chocolate croissants today," they're they they don't have an unlimited supply, and so there's that risk of over promising and or under delivering that whether you're talking about a bakery or um, a coffee shop or um, even hard goods and soft goods, right? There, there's a challenge of making sure that I advertise what I have, but don't sell more than that. So if I'm actually transacting online, the last thing you want to do is commit to selling uh, a set of golf clubs that you don't have in stock or um, a special order for a, a coffee. You know, my wife drinks almond milk because she she's lactose intolerant. And biggest frustration in the world is to is to have the online app say, "Yep, we'll have your order ready in 15 minutes." She gets there and waits through the drive through, and then, oh, sorry, we're out of almond milk today. So there, there's a great opportunity to provide um, that that easy experience, that convenience of ordering online or using the app. Um, but there's also that risk of not having the inventory uh, to either sell or provide a service. Now, the other part of that, slightly different, that I, I, I'd, I'd warn folks about is remember that it's the same people who are doing those online orders. So um, if I'm looking to, to schedule uh, my, my dogs to, to go get groomed at Tazzy and Boo here, I need to realize that, yes, that, that spot may be available online, but if I call... Those are the folks who are actually delivering that service. So you got to be careful about making sure that you staff both channels, um, that, yeah. that there are people available to answer the phone and people actually doing the work that they're answering the phone for. So again, you're not over-promising and under-delivering. Yep, yep. Uh, can I just say Tazzy and Boo is an adorable name for a groomer. So that's that's cute. We'll have to talk about dogs sometime too. <laughs> so so let, let me ask you a little bit of a follow on there, Bill. So if a small business is going online and Small Business Saturday is coming up, how can they kind of market themselves? So you talk about staffing both channels, but can you give some guidance on how people might be able to promote their retail shops um, for Small Business Saturday? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, Mark mentioned this, um, the, the, the social channels are, are huge now, right? People are, are paying more attention to what's going on out there because we're kind of constrained in our physical activities, our digital activities have picked up. And so we're seeing a lot of retailers doubling down on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and reaching out to their customers, whether it's direct promotions through an app. Um, I, I've seen a, a probably three, four hundred percent increase in the number of texts I'm getting from the the retail establishments that I do use. Right, my my dry cleaner is now offering delivery service, and so they're they're sending it now. They're only doing it once a week, and they want to make sure I remember. I never got those before, right? I knew it was there, but now they're reminding me on Monday night. Hey, put your stuff out if you want us to pick it up on Tuesday morning. So. That's what I've seen a lot of retailers do is they're getting they're they're really capitalizing on that that social media outreach to promote themselves. And I would say double down again um, for Small Business Saturday because a lot of people don't realize it's out there. And I think that the average person is going to love to support small businesses on on Small Business Saturday. They just need to be reminded that's what's coming up. 
Yeah. Well, I know uh, us, those of us here in the social channels at Cisco, we're going to be promoting Small Business Saturday a lot. So hopefully we'll be able to help get the word out. Um, so, but I think that what we've been talking about leads in, Mark, to what I want to ask you about, because we're hearing so much about cybersecurity and cybersecurity threats. And I think, you know, there's, there's a lot in the news. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, cybersecurity threats for a brick and mortar operation or, or an online operation, especially over like a super busy shopping season that we've got coming up. Could you help us understand the cybersecurity threats? I, I can try. Um, so <laughs> uh, it, it is, it's definitely been a, a challenge uh, the last, uh, or this calendar year. Uh, the FBI is reporting that cybercrime is up about 75% this year, which is a, a startling number. Uh, and in no small part uh, for retailers, it's because they've had to pivot really quickly. Um, they maybe didn't have curbside or home delivery, as, as Bill was just mentioning. Um, so th they've tried to stand things up really quickly. And uh, you know, even on a good day, uh, security may not be top of mind for them. Uh, when you're trying to keep the lights on and keep the business open, uh, then it, it's nowhere on the radar at all. So it, it's been a, a real challenge from, from that perspective. Uh, what I would say is uh, small businesses uh, should be setting out with security in mind right from the start. Uh, design it in. Uh, and without getting too technical, uh, it's what we refer to as zero trust, which basically sets the default um, uh, security for your network uh, to be uh, trusted. So what happens is, or your applications within that environment. So uh, when you bring those apps up, um, by default, they, they will be in a secure environment. Uh, so whatever you innovate uh, in, in order to be agile, uh, then uh, it should be secure going uh, from there. Now, particularly for small businesses, there's a number of other things I would be uh, focusing on. Ensuring the install wireless, whether that's for associates or for customers, uh, make sure it's secure. Uh, make sure that your physical network equipment is uh, physically secured, so in a locked closet, because it's very easy for someone to come and you know, plug in a laptop or, or whatever uh, and try and access um, you know, either transactional data or PII that you, you may be stored. And make sure that you're taking advantage of uh, things like encryption to ensure uh, that uh, all the data you're storing and transmitting, uh, even if it's intercepted, can't be uh, used. Uh, one of the big things uh, currently is uh, passwords are intrinsically weak. Even if we try and do the right thing and have long, complex passwords, they're still intrinsically weak. So uh, multi-factor authentication uh, is key. Uh, now, if anyone's not familiar with that, if you think about your bank or some of the uh, larger retail sites, uh, when you try and log on, it will send you a validation code to your phone. That's your second factor of authentication. Uh, and that will prevent somebody from hijacking uh, passwords. Even if they were to get hold of your password, they can't uh, physically sign on without receiving that code back. Uh, and, and the final thing uh, would be uh, watching out for skimming. Uh, so uh, skimmers are, are phys generally considered to be physical devices which can take card data uh, off of a, a transaction. Uh, it can, in fact, happen in a digital environment as well, in e-commerce. Uh, they can put what's called a shim into your website, which kind of filters off the, uh, the, the card information. And we're actually working with a, a large federal agency right now uh, on uh, skimmer detection um, algorithms that we will build into our wireless networking. Yeah. So, you know, it's actually really encouraging, Mark, hearing you talk about all the different kinds of technology that's available to help protect small business retailers against these cybersecurity threats. So it's great to hear what's out there. But let me flip that question a little bit around now. So as an avid online shopper myself and a consumer, right, what, what should I be thinking about um, from a cybersecurity perspective as I'm going into my favorite retailer sites? Like, are there things I could be doing or things I should be thinking about? 
Ab absolutely, absolutely. So uh, when you're going to uh, an e-commerce site, uh, first thing is ensuring that you've got the, the little padlock or secure symbol uh, next to the URL. Uh, to, uh, that's the, the, the website address. Uh, to, that shows that uh, it's a validated site and that the traffic's encrypted between uh, your uh, device and the, uh, the, the website at the far end. Uh, I mentioned multi-factor authentication. Uh, if you have the ability to turn that on, so if you have uh, you know, an account with uh, whoever the retailer may be, if they offer multi-factor authentication, turn it on. Um, it's, it's all too easy for uh, passwords to be captured and uh, then an account takeover can take place. Uh, and I think finally, uh, contactless payment. Uh, so uh, obviously that's more applicable in, in uh, physical transactions, but uh, with contactless payments, you're not passing your card uh, through a, a device which could potentially skim, uh, whether you're using Samsung Pay, Apple Pay, in-app payments, anything like that. Uh, generally, it's going to be uh, safer than a physical card, both against skimming, but also around the contact uh, and the fact that you know somebody is going to uh, potentially handle your card. Uh, you know, we, we obviously want to uh, damp down any any risk of transmission uh, of, of the, the virus through contact with the cards. Great. And Brian, did you uh, want to make a comment on that as well? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I say this out of out of love and respect for our small businesses and our entrepreneurs out there. Uh, and certainly not to scare you, uh, but this is not a this is not a COVID thing. This is an all the time no. thing. And Mark mentioned how you have to have a, a security orientation in your product and in your service. And I, and I think that's really, really important. Uh, while you don't ever hear about how John's Donuts was the victim of a ransomware attack, uh, I can say unequivocally that the the vast majority uh, of of uh, victims of cybercrime and cybersecurity are small businesses, uh, and it's because you're generally an easy target. So uh, think about that when you're thinking about the investments in, in dollars that you need to make an expertise. Uh, when a small business is the victim of a ransomware or phishing attack, there's way too high a percentage of those uh, of those businesses that do not last another year. And again, I'm not trying to scare it is out of out of love and care for this, uh, th this part of our population. Investing in security uh, is one of the most critical things that you can invest in after product and after your go to market. Yes, and Brian, I hear that all the time from small businesses. They think that they are not a target for a cyber attack because they're low-hanging fruit. What is a cyber criminal going to get from hacking them? But it's the volume and the fact that it's so easy for them to get into small businesses is why they really are a threat. So I think that's excellent guidance. And then, you know, Mark, based on what you were saying, I'm going to change my password from password123 to maybe <laughs> something a little bit more secure. And I won't use that password123 on every single site that I need a password on. So I think, you know, excellent guidance for both the retailers and for the consumers on cybersecurity. I'm jumping um, onto Amazon right now. Uh, <laughs> password123. <123. laughs> <laughs> uh, so... So I want to shift a little bit to one of my favorite things about small businesses across the board in retail is how bootstrappy they are and how innovative they are. And COVID hits and some of the innovation that we have seen from some of these small businesses has been unbelievable. It's been, it's been mind blowing. But what I would like to ask you, Bill, to kind of chime in on is what kind of digital innovation have you seen over the last year in these small business retail? I, I'll tell you one of the biggest ones um, has been the use of video and video analytics. So understand, especially with curbside, right? So, so lots of folks have had to deliver out to the curb, um, but a lot of retailers haven't thought about what's the visibility out there. So how do I know that you, Amy, are here for your order? And what can I do to integrate video analytics with um, presence analytics, right? Using Wi-Fi um, to say, okay, you've placed an order, you're now at the curb, how do I know what you're, you're at the curb, right? The, the old style way is put out a sign, you know, that you printed out at the local store and hopefully wrapped in saran wrap so that it doesn't get wet and, 
and it says call us at you know the phone number that works but what's really been interesting is the number of people who have said all right you know i know i have three online orders today i can ask my people to tell me what their what kind of car they're going to be coming in and the recognition capabilities that say, all right, of my three, I've got one SUV and two sedans, a blue sedan and a red sedan. I can identify when those three are here and then send a message immediately to the people inside that says, hey, Amy's here in her red sedan to pick up her order. That's been really interesting how quickly our partners have been able to develop those capabilities and our other partners have been able to install and, and leverage those capabilities for retailers. The other thing I've seen, and Mark mentioned this, was a lot of focus around um, contactless payment. And so how can I interact, not just for payment, but also just in general, how can I get chat? How can I get messaging working between an app and a, and a retailer? So that changing the way you communicate with your customers has been something that the retailers have really figured out here in the last, well, I would say last nine months, but it happened really quickly because if you didn't make it happen, you lost out. So really within the first uh, two or three months of, of all of these changes, that, that idea of getting better visibility into what's happening around and in the store and better ways of communicating with their customers has really been impressive. Yep, yep. I agree with all of those points. And it is so encouraging to see some of these small retailers that we love so much be able to innovate and to adapt their business models and, you know, with so much else on their plate, they have still figured out how to, to be part of the community through COVID. So I think that that digital innovation has played a huge part there. Yeah. So, so Brian, I'm going to throw the next one to you. Um, we're, we've talked a lot about different types of technology. Mark did a great job of talking about security and, you know, Bill talking about all the digital innovation. But if you're a small business retailer, you don't necessarily know about, you know, where do you even get started to implement some of this stuff? So I know a lot of times our small businesses at Cisco, they really rely heavily on their partners and partnership to help them figure this out. So could you talk a little bit about how a partner can play a role in helping these small businesses? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. I think I think you, you, you look for, uh, not only manufacturers of technology like Cisco, who are really great at, at pinpointing the pain associated with what technology could do uh, or the promise of what technology could do for a retail customer and for a, a small business in general. Uh, the, the second side of that coin is being able to, to work with uh, a solutions partner, it, really in any sense, uh, who understands, knows, and cares about uh, you and companies that look a lot like you. Uh, there are many businesses out there that, that serve uh, all types of customers. And, and candidly, CDW is one of them. Uh, at, the, at the intro, I mentioned that I've been serving the small business market for about 12 years or so. Uh, and that's because of our dedication and focus around this discrete vertical within uh, the economic landscape of the United States. And when you, when you find a partner and a provider who really focus time and attention, not only on the solutions needed and best practices associated, but also understand that those, those are the same uh, partners and providers that, that truly get the types of things that happen upstream and how to apply them at, uh, at the appropriate levels downstream. Uh, our, uh, our mission statement in, in the small business organization is, is helping customers improve their business through worry-free technology solutions. And, and all parts of that, that mission statement are really critical. If I just sell you the right Cisco firewall, not done my job. Uh, maybe I've created a, a secure response to uh, to your network, but candidly, I haven't uh, I haven't explored the opportunity with you. I haven't showcased how it's going to help your business improve. I haven't shown you risk mitigation strategies. I just sold you a firewall. And uh, when you work with when you work with someone who truly is dedicated to and cares about small business like Cisco, Cisco Meraki, CDW, you get the experience uh, and, and and the best practices that the industry of technology has to offer framed in a way that makes sense to both a technical uh, coworker that you have within your population and candidly a non-technical coworker. Our job is to make this stuff simple to ensure that it gets used properly. The worst thing that you can do is buy all of the right stuff and use it uh, incorrectly and become a victim of, of a threat. So our, our value prop and, and companies like us share a value 
of, of just great reads, relationships, rigor around solutions, uh, and, and ultimately results. I think I think the biggest strategic advantage that I have in my in my world, and I share it with Cisco, is that we discreetly focus on customers like you, so we understand your pain and we understand the promise that technology can deliver for you. And I'll jump in on that as well, Brian, because uh, it, it's something that went through my mind before and I, I didn't say it out loud. Technology on its own won't cure the problem. No. It, it's people, process, and technology. Uh, you, know, you can back up the truck and put, push a bunch of uh, technology out onto the dock, but if it's not designed, implemented, and operated correctly, then it's not worth anything. Some of the biggest breaches uh, that have occurred uh, in the last five years they had oodles of, uh, of technology uh, and it just wasn't being operated correctly. Yep, yep, absolutely. And I think partnership is so important for sure for all the reasons, Brian, you mentioned and, and you too, Mark. So um, we're getting towards the end of our time. We're gonna move to live Q&A in just a few minutes. But before we do that, um, we've talked a lot about Small Business Saturday. The, you know, November 28th, it's the 10-year anniversary this year of Small Business Saturday. So I'm going to start with you, Bill. How are you going to celebrate Small Business Saturday this year? How are you going to support your local retailers? Well, I, uh, I know that my boys will be here um, for the holiday break, so we'll be shopping for, uh, we'll say Christmas, but probably not. <laughs> um, they, they're, they're getting into cold weather, and, uh, and they're going to be looking for stuff. So I know we're going to be shopping at some of the local stores. And uh, I know that I'll be, uh, we'll, we'll eat dinner that night at 131 Main. Well, we'll bring in from 131 Main, which is the uh, the restaurant here that uh, I went to my first date with my wife at, and that's where we go for special dates. So uh, so we'll all have 131 Main that night. Oh, that sounds amazing. And and almost a little bit sweet and romantic too, but <laughs> good job, good job. I totally approve. Um, how about you, Brian? Um, what will you do to support local retailers on Small Business Saturday this year? Yeah, a, a lot of it is 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 personal reflection, and 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 I know that uh, that it may feel like a lonely path as an entrepreneur, but uh, ninety nine point nine percent of the businesses in the United States are small businesses, and over fifty percent of our population is employed by a small business. So uh, there can be no uh, bigger uh, financial, I'll call it holidays or celebrations than investing in, in small business Saturday. Uh, I'm gonna do two things. Uh, number one, I'm gonna call my dad. Uh, uh, my dad and my grandma are, are both serial entrepreneurs. I think I've disappointed <laughs> them a little bit by working for a company, but uh, they, they have uh, instilled in me an entrepreneurial spirit that I, that I just find is as so, uh, uh, just, just so exciting and, and inspiring. So I'm going to call them and, and, and thank them and, and congratulate them on, on their journeys that they've had being small business owners and entrepreneurs. And the second thing I'm going to do is it's sounding a lot like Bill's outside of the, the less romantic aspect. I, you know, we'll go with our teenage boys to downtown Chandler and downtown Gilbert to do a little bit of Christmas shopping. Uh, certainly uh, visit our local restaurants and establishments and, and have some good takeout for sure. Yeah. You know, that's funny you use the, Word serial entrepreneur. I'm sure they're very proud of you, Brian. You're very accomplished. I think, you know, I'm sure they're just fine with you working for a company. But, you know, it does, it runs in the blood sometimes, doesn't it? In families that pass on that spirit and that kind of heart and soul. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, now, Mark, I know you're going to celebrate Small Business Saturday too. So let's hear it. What are you going to do? So, uh, okay. So strangely enough, I just got a ping from my wife saying she's now watching online, so I can't tell you one of the things. Oh. <laughs> she, she, she said she just tuned in and uh, saw Bill. Um, so um, I'm not going to tell you uh, what I'm going to guess from that little strip mall we talked about before, but there's a store there that she particularly likes, and uh, I will be picking something up from there. Um, and uh, there's uh, there's all. A Hallmark store there, uh, which obviously is locally owned. So uh, obviously, I'll be picking up my uh, Christmas cards, etc. There. Ah, lovely. Well, your your lucky dad. Her surprise has not been spoiled, so I'm glad she pinged you because I don't want to spoil any surprises oh. with the chat today. Um, 
Okay, so we're going to move into Q&A uh, Q now, guys. And my first question is from Lauren. And Bill, I think I'll have you answer this one. She's watching on Cisco.com. And she says that she has got a small business and she needs to get her products online really fast. She doesn't have an online presence right now. So how do you do it quick? Like, if you're a retailer, what's, like, what's your first step? How do you get it on for, like, what is the first thing you do to quickly and safely, um, cybersecurity effectively, um, get, get it online? How do you get your stuff online? Yeah, so I'll go back to what Brian just said a few minutes ago. I think that, that we have a tendency to think that um, things are, are in our own hands and we can do it ourselves, but the reality is companies like CDW do this all the time with thousands of customers. And if you're doing it as a, a small retailer, hopefully you'll only have to do it once. And the way to ensure that is by doing it with someone who's done it thousands of times. They know all of the, 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 the pitfalls, they know all the, the, the best practices. I'd say leverage your partners, right? Partners are out there for a reason. Um, they're great advisors, they're great implementers. Um, and someone like CDW is who I'd go to if I were in that situation. That's, that's great advice, and we talked about how important it is to pick the right uh, partner, not to only give you the right technology, but as Brian said, to show you how to use it the right way to make sure you're being secure and safe and make sure you're getting um, all of the effective um, outputs from that technology for your business. So that's a great answer. Thank you for that. And then we've got Aaron here who has asked, are there, a, uh, of all the different kinds of retail establishments that there are, is there any one that needs to pay more attention to security than the other? So Mark, I feel like because the word security was in there, I'm going to throw it right on your way. So if you're like a, a small business salon or a small business bakery or a small business groomer, who needs to pay more attention to security? Uh, I, I would say everyone needs to pay attention to security um, because uh, not everyone is transacting through their website. Obviously, if you're transacting, that's a, a significant risk. Um, but uh, if you're holding any kind of personally identifiable information uh, about your clients uh, or anything like that, then you need to be uh, thinking about your security first and foremost. Uh, you have a responsibility to your customers to take care of their data and ensure their privacy. Uh, and uh, you, you really don't want the uh, all of the fallout and the headaches that would uh, occur if you were breached transactionally uh, and, and card information was stolen. Yeah, that, that's great. Um, Amy, I'll, I'll jump in on that. Mark Please. mentioned it earlier. But when you're talking about, uh, he mentioned payment skimmers, and these are the, the small devices that fit over um, a card slot and, and a keypad. Think about gas station um, uh, pumps as a good example, and a lot of convenience stores are owned by small businesses. Um, I, I'd be very careful there, too, because those payment terminals are away from the view of a lot of people in the store. And so you want to make sure that you've got some visibility into what's going on out there and that you're protected against what people are doing out of sight of the folks that are manning the store. Yeah, that's really, really great answers to those questions, guys. And I'm going to ask you one last question, which I think is really interesting. So this is from Madge on LinkedIn. And Madge is asking, if you're a small scale farmer, how can you benefit from using technology to maybe find a market to uh, market your produce or what your um, you know, what you're farming. And I think that's really interesting because, you know, you go to the farmer's market and you think about that as a retail establishment, you know, not really, but kind of a retail in a way. So do you guys have any insights on anything we've talked about today and how it can maybe even be applied to farming? I'll give it a I'll give it a rip and the guys can can chime in. I, I think one of the things that, uh, that that jumps out at me in this question is making sure that you that you have accurate access to data around who your customer might be. And you mentioned like go go to a, go to a farmer's market or or find a new customer uh, outlets for yourself. What do you do when you when you find them? Right? How do you manage that list? How do you how do you cultivate it? How do you make sure that the customers who have bought from you before know that there's a great crop uh, coming next week of of whatever it is that you've grown? And I think that you utilizing 
uh, you know, customer relationship management tools, email marketing are just great ways to do it. Uh, and, and kind of tying into the, the last question about security, like it, your product is your, your number one competitive advantage. Using data about your customers is like 1A. So if you ensure that you've cultivated a great database of, of customers and their behaviors, you can access that database in a really meaningful way and cut down on, on just general losses, I would assume, that are associated with, with being in the, in the farming industry, right? Your job is to get uh, a, a customer to get your product at an exact time before that product uh, is, is no longer viable. And being able to use data inside of, your, inside of your business to be able to find those customers, manage that database in that time frame is so critical to being able to drive up revenues and, and keep your profits up. I would add um, to that that uh, we mentioned earlier about social media and a lot of, of, of uh, organic farming and, and those kinds of, of businesses are looking to reach out to their customers. It's like the, the modern version of putting a sign on the local telephone pole, right? But they need to be ready for the response to that. And when you talk about farming, especially these days, there are going to be a lot of questions. And so you, you don't want to get overwhelmed with those questions. I would recommend they look at what does that social media presence look like? Can I answer the questions using the, the website or a Facebook page or whatever? But also don't be afraid to explore things like chatbots. It sounds like a big undertaking, but the ability to use chatbots to answer your, your 10 or 20 or 30 most commonly asked questions like, how long is that milk good for? Do I have to keep the eggs at, at um, you know, in the refrigerator? Could I leave them, you know, on the countertop at room temperature? That kind of stuff that you get, the very common questions about your products or your services can be answered through chatbots. And it's not very expensive and it frees you up to do the other stuff that does take your attention versus answering the same question 15 times a week, which is good. You want people answering the, asking those questions so you have that engagement, but let's make sure they get the, the questions answered and you can focus on operating the farm as opposed to um, spending all your time answering those questions. Yeah, I think that, I, you know, the, the chatbots never would have occurred to me, Bill, in this situation, but I think that's incredible guidance, absolutely incredible guidance. Okay, guys, as much as I hate to say it, we're at the end of our time today. Um, I wanted to thank you, Brian Campbell, Bill Farnsworth, Mark Scanlon. Thank you guys so much. So much value, so much insight that you were able to share with our audience today. So really, you guys, thank you so much for the time. And I just wanted to let folks out there know, if you want to learn more about retail solutions for small business, some of the ones that we talked about today, you can go to cisco.com slash go slash SE retail. And I'll say it again, that is cisco.com slash go slash SE retail. And we've got all kinds of information there that can um, help you learn a little bit more about some of the things we talked today. So don't forget, November 28th, Small Business Saturday. Please frequent your local retailers. They really need you this year, okay? Okay, thank you guys so much for attending Cisco Chat Live, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Bye guys. The children really need resources to support them and to get the learning capability to support their future. We actually leverage Cisco some technology like WebEx. Uh, we, we provide some training to the teacher. They can, you know, improve their skill and their reading knowledge and they can know the world better. I think the together uh, we have a big power is a uh, not only one or two children can benefit from that. I'm proud of that. Between rural school kids and a universe of learning, there's Lucy Guo. Okay, give it a try. Between wisdom and curiosity, there's a bridge between ideas and inspiration, trauma, and treatment. Gained a couple of more pounds since last time. That's good for the baby. Between the people 
and their leaders. The virus affects the heart. 